Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to start a Tuesday tips uh, for you. As you know, we've had a lot of changes on our side. There's a lot of transitioning for us. We moved out of our big shop and we are actually now working from a smaller studio and we've got our office section as well. This is giving us the opportunity to actually do a lot more YouTube videos for you. Um, I do on online courses as well with my Shufa designs in pattern drafting, but for my YouTube channel, I really wanted to be to be a little bit more educational. So I really want to share with you tips and techniques, not just on when we work with different fabrics, but also when we're working with our sewing machines and our overlockers, because that is really what we should know if we are going to be creating all these beautiful garments that we want to make. So to start off with it, I thought let's first concentrate on overlockers. There is an uh, overlocker is really such a great part of our sewing or when we're sewing our garments and a lot of people don't really know what we can do with our overlockers. There is so much more than just overlocking the, the seams and that. So we are going to cover, or I'm going to cover now, basically from the beginning for you, uh, for those of you that's actually still quite new to overlocking. So I will be doing every week on Tuesday, we'll be loading the videos for you for the tips and techniques. So my plan is really, as I said, today is really the basics of overlocking. And from there, I will take you in further where I work with different decorative threads. When I do flat locking, we'll look at different, um, you know, your rolled hem options as well. And we'll be talking about them. Let's say we do the rolled hem. We will really look at doing two thread rolled hem and a three thread rolled hem. When will I want to do the two thread? And when will I choose the three thread? All of those things I'm going to go through with you. So we are now really, like I said, starting with basics. I'm just going to cover a couple of basics that everybody needs to know about the overlocker. Now, first off is our needles. We find that people don't always know what needle size to put in because it's not really discussed out there um, on the videos and that. Now your best or, or the only suggested needles that you are going to use is your size 80 and 90 and we're using a universal needle. I will now and then I will change my needle if I need to and the only time I will do it if I'm really working dense fabrics I tend to like to put a jeans needle in. Basically we're staying with a universal or now in smetch as well you do get your overlocking needles as well. But your sizing is the one that's important. We work with a size 80 or a size 90 needle. We can't go bigger than a size 90 because then the looper starts catching on the needle. Remember your top looper. If you look at, let's imagine this is my needle and the top looper on the top, which is going past that needle. Now, if I've got a too big a needle in there, this top looper is going to keep bumping this needle. So I'm either going to break a needle or I'm going to damage my looper as well. So we stick to the biggest needle being a 90. Now our smallest needle is going to be a size 80. I'm just thinking we are used to saying 80 or 90, but I think we're talking also on a 12 and a 14. It's usually a 80-12 or it will be a 90-14. So that is the one that we are actually using. Remember, we are sewing through seams. We have a higher speed that we're sewing with. So as soon as I go smaller than 80, my chances of breaking a needle again is going to be quite big because the smaller the number, the thinner that needle is going to be. So I can really break a needle. And of course, when we break needles with our machines over time, we're actually putting the, t the, the timing out on our machine. And if my timing is out, again, I'm not going to be forming stitches. So those are really, or this is really important for me that you realize those are my two needle sizes that I'm going to work with. The next thing that we are going to look at as well is our threads. We work with polyester thread mostly on our overlockers. The, cut, the, the polyester is really an all-purpose thread. It is a stronger thread. It can handle the high speed that we are sewing with on our overlocker. As soon as I go with a cotton, the cotton can break at a higher speed. The natural fibers will tend to break a little bit more. I'm not saying we can't use them. I still use them for decorative work, especially the variegated cottons that I use as well. When I, I love working with that variegated cotton for my flat locking, when sometimes when I even do roll dems. But your main thread that you are going to use is your polyester thread. I will look at our decorative threads as well as we go along with these videos when I start doing my decorative work on the overlocker. 
Another important thing to know as well is that I want to use a good quality thread. If you are using a no-name brand thread, we tend to also not get perfect stitching. You might find that it's really pulling tight on that fabric. Uh, years ago when I started sewing, I'm, I'm one of those people that went and uh, when I found the no-name brand and they were actually not so expensive, I went and bought about every color I could and I bought four reels of them. I think that time we were paying, I think I was... It was about 10 rand for four reels or something like that. But every time I sewed, especially if I'm working like a pants leg that side seams, I always used to get these little packers. It's almost as if it pulled my fabric in a little, little bit. And that was really because of that thread not giving. And my crotch seams always used to, <laughs> that always used to pop. Um, that thread doesn't give. It just doesn't give like we do get with our normal brand or our good brands. So please make sure that you're using a good quality thread. Um, it is, you know what, we're paying a lot for our machines. These machines aren't cheap. No matter what brand we're buying, we're investing in our machines and we want to look after it. So we have to make sure that we're using good quality needles, that we are using good quality thread. First thing that I wanted to talk to you about was just the needles and the thread. Now let's look at basic overlock stitches and I'm going to now specifically just talk about four thread and three thread. As we carry on in the series we will cover the two thread as well but for now all of the overlockers out there you'll be able to work a four thread and a, th a three thread. Now the question is when am I sewing with four threads and that is meaning I've got my left and my right needle in and I've got my bottom and top looper threaded so that is my four thread that I'm using. Now I use the fourth thread when I'm doing construction. If I'm saying I'm doing construction, that means I am making my whole garment on my overlocker. I tend to with my everyday wear, my, my t-shirts, all of those. No, I'm not talking about formal wear now where I need a bit of tailoring. Really my everyday wear, um, I tend to do the whole thing on my overlocker. And the reason being, we are all working with all these knits at the moment and I have differential feed on my overlocker which helps to feed that stretch fabric so that I'm not getting it to stretch out anymore. It actually just brings it in a little bit for me. Now, then I will, as I said, work with my four thread. The left needle will be my safety stitch, which would have been my, let's say, my sewing machine thread. And then the right thread or the right needle will be basically part of my overlocking stitch that I've always done. I'm now going to do a stitch for you because we always want to make sure that we've got a balanced stitch as well. So when you re-thread your machine, I want you to take a, a fabric that's got no stretch to it. I just use calico and I just cut little strips. So no matter what fabric I'm going to work on, when I free thread it, I test and I make sure I have a balanced stitch. Remember, so much can go wrong. I could have caught the thread somewhere on the, on the inside or it could have gone double over a looper and I didn't notice it. So I'm first making sure my threading is correct because I'm telling you now, 99% of the time when you are having problems with your overlocker, it's because of your threading that's wrong somewhere. So we are going to test this now. Mine is already threaded. I'm not going to go through the threading because your manual will tell you how to thread. And there is videos out there that will show you how to thread the bottom looper and the top looper. So please follow your instructions that you have in your manual. I'm not going to cover that. We're really going to talk about the stitching and my quality stitches and my decorative stitches that we're going to do. So with mine, with your overlockers as well, I don't lift my foot. Um, guys, let me go back one step talking about lifting the foot what is important with our machines now if we've got this lay in system i need to lift my foot and i'm specifically talking now my bedinas and my bonnet machines when i lift the foot i release the tension these tension discs that's in here actually opens up a little bit so that that thread can go and lie right in the middle of those tension discs once I put the foot down, those tension discs then closes on that thread. So when we are threading, please lift your presser foot then so that it releases the tension disc so that we can thread properly. If I don't do that again, I might pick up that my stitching isn't correct. So because it didn't go all the way into the tension disc. So let's just do a sample. I'm going to sew a sample for us. Another tip that I wanted to speak to you or just give you, don't cut your thread 
close to the foot. As soon as I start stitching again, it tends to want to pull in and I can jam as soon as I start sewing. So you always want to have your thread going to about this um, length, which is on my machine, the edge of the machine, and I can go and cut it there. We always need to leave that little bit of a tail when we are sewing. Now I'm going to actually just show you something here, but I will, if you look at the photos that I'm, I'm also adding here for you, you will see the quality of the stitch. Now with the quality of the stitch, if I'm looking at my top looper and I'm looking at the bottom looper, I want them to meet exactly on the edge of my fabric. If they are not meeting on the edge, if the bottom pulls slightly to the front or the top pulls to the back, I'm off somewhere. And my recommendation is going to be first check your, your threading before you start working on the tensions. Like I mentioned, most of the time we could have threaded wrong somewhere because if your machine is set on the settings that they are recommending, mine is for instance on fours, I can literally go and work any fabric. I won't have any problems with it. So I already know if I wear go and I look and I see I'm on four, then I know, okay, somewhere my threading is wrong because my machine I know, um, I service it regularly, so I know my tensions will be correct on my machine. So make sure if you look at this now and look at that photo again, the close-up that I'm showing you, you can see where those stitches are interlocking and they are interlocking on the edge of my fabric. That is our balance stitch. Another thing that I want you to have a look at as well, and um, I'm showing it to you guys this way, but I'm also adding photos because I know it's going to be so much easier. Now you can see my left needle and my right needle thread. Now that left needle, like I said, will be my safety stitch. So I've got two rows of needle thread and that gives me a secure overlock stitch. So I can literally go and just sew my whole garment with it. I know there's some machines on the market. I know when we did our overlock classes in the shop as well, that some of them doesn't really like it. So you've got to test your machine, make sure it likes or it allows you to do that. Because if I go and I pull and I'm going to go closer, if I'm really pulling my thread, can you see, you can't see my stitches. I've really got to start pulling it because I'm working on black. I've really got to force this for you to see those black stitches. Okay, so um, mine is really secure and I've made yoga pants, everything with my, um, with my overlocker and I've washed it and tumble dried it and it's still sewn together, it doesn't come apart. The only thing is what's nice with this, when we're working with our knits, it's still allowing the fabric to stretch and move with my body. That is why I love my overlocker so much. I'm going to do the three thread um, narrow overlock now. Also, what we've got to consider is the thickness of my fabric. If I'm working with a thicker fabric, I'm working with fleece, I'm working with denim, all those thicker fabrics, even my track suiting, I want the wide overlock stitch. You need to then use your left needle. With my medium weight to lightweight fabrics, I'm going to do the narrow overlock stitch, which is my right needle. Now I'm going to just do a right needle, uh, with my right needle, which is the narrow overlock, just to show you something. Now, if I look at this and I'm going to hold it up for you, can you see that this part is narrower than that area over there? Now, remember here I had four threads, but I still had my left needle in. So when I am going to remove my right needle and do just use the left needle for a wide overlock stitch, then that will be the width that I can get. And there you can see I've got the narrower one, which is for my medium weight to light weight. So you could see the difference when I was working with having the left needle in as well as the right needle. I'm not going to do a left um, or a wide overlock now because it's exactly the same as what I've done. I'm going to remove my right needle and I'm going to leave the left needle in. But working with my balance stitch, which I had both needles in, that actually shows you what the width would be. And that is where it's important for me that you understand that we can work only with the one needle, but realize that I am going to need to work with my sewing machine as well. I need that securing or that safety stitch, which is going to prevent the seams from pulling open. If it's really just going to be on the overlocker and you're not going to go to your sewing machine, both needles need to be in your overlocker. 
Another thing on the basics of your overlock as well is to know your stitch length. If we are working with our medium weight fabric, again, it's going to be two and a half. And most of my fabric that I'm working with, my basic setting for my stitch length is always two and a half. My differential will always be on normal, the N or the one. And then if you've got foot pressure, it will also be on medium. So that's just basic settings and basic knowledge that you need to know on your overlocker. We will, in the following videos, we will really cover the differential. When do I need a longer stitch? When am I going to maybe play a little bit with my attentions to actually, I'm on purpose, I'm purposely throwing them off almost to get a certain technique done. It's like when I'm gathering fabric. Um, so all of those things I'm going to cover with you. But please go and give this a try. Now go work on your overlocker and do a fourth thread um, where you are making sure it's a basic um, so or not where it gives you a balanced stitch and make notes if you need to of what is your balanced stitch, what was your tensions, what's your stitch length. And then also go and do your uh, left needle, which is the white overlock stitch, and also do a narrow overlock stitch. Just do those three stitches for me. Start building a little reference file for yourself. And then um, we will then carry on next week where I'm going to talk to you about cutting width in differential. I hope that you guys are going to enjoy all these Tuesday tips that I'm going to be sharing with you. It's really, um, you know what, we've got all these amazing toys that we're playing with and we need to know how to use it. Unless we know how to use it, I really cannot use it to the fullest and I cannot go and experiment and and just play and do these amazing things that I want to do. So this process is really going to teach you how to use your overlocker, what to look out for. And I really hope you guys are going to enjoy learning more about your overlocker. So until the next video that we will be now posting every Tuesday for you, uh, just go play guys. That's all I can say. Enjoy your week.